Hello lovelies! I hope you're doing very, very well. Jane here and today I want to talk about one of the top interior design trends for 2021 and that is Japandi. This is a part of a mini series that I'm creating that explores the different styles that we see are very much on trend at the moment. Now, if you are thinking that this seems familiar, you are quite right. <laughs> You see, I posted a video last week about Japandi. However, I got some criticism about that video that I really had to take into consideration. So I decided to take down my previous video, uh, make a completely new one about Japandi from scratch. And this is what you're seeing today. I want to tell you the whole story and everything that happened at the end of this video. If you want to skip along and go directly to that part I'm gonna leave the time here below so that you can go ahead and do just that what is Japandi well Japandi is the top trending interior design style for 2021 however it has actually been quite popular for a few years already and I have personally had clients in Norway specifically the Oslo Drammen area that love the Japandi style and I've had the opportunity to decorate their homes in this style Japandi is a mix of Japanese style and Scandi style and the combination of these blends into the most beautiful calm and tranquil space the two styles are really similar and very easy to mix like coffee and chocolate in order to understand Japandi we need to take a look at what is Japanese style and what is the Scandi style and in order to explain this I want to take you through five key points for the style key point number one what is the style? Well, in both the Japanese style and the Scandi style, we need to think minimalistic. All our surfaces like floors and walls and ceilings are very smooth, very clean lined, not any fuss of any kind, uh, no ornamentations. Uh, not a lot of details, just clean lines. When it comes to the layout of the space, um, every single item needs to have a function. We do not over furnish any room and we don't see any clutter at all. Our furniture, again, they are very minimalistic, they're very modern. We have clean lines, uh, simple shapes. Very often we are looking for those high quality handcrafted items rather than stuff that comes from a factory assembly line. We are choosing quality over quantity. Be very mindful and intentional on any item of furniture or decor that you bring into your home. Less is more. Key point number two, color palette. In both Japanese style and Scandi style, we see a neutral color palette. However, in the Japanese style, we see the neutral colors are more to the darker side. They're um, deeper, they're more musty than the Scandinavian style. So we find a lot of uh, rusty reds and different kinds of browns, uh, golden tones. We see some dark, musty, deep greens and also some cloudy blues. But definitely, they are neutral, they are warm and they are deep. In the Scandi style, we also have a neutral color palette, but this time we move on the lighter side of the scale. I am Norwegian, and if you have ever lived in Scandinavia or visited over a longer period of time, you know that we don't have a lot of daylight, especially winter time. Uh, when we get up in the morning, it's dark. When we come home from work, it's dark. We only have those few precious hours during the day with something similar to daylight <laughs> and this is why you within the Scandi style color palette find a lot of warm whites like ivory off-white cream white egg white and so on I don't know how many different whites that we have and you also find the light and bright other neutrals like beige tones sandy tones and so on. It's very important for us to get that light and bright and airy feel in our homes. When we put these two color palettes together, we get the Japandi color palette. 
this palette reaches from the light neutrals all the way to the darker and more mustier neutrals. In order to create the perfect Japandi home, you need to keep the color palette overall to the lighter, brighter side, but then you need to add some contrast and some depth from the deeper tones of the scale. So you need to keep your floors light, most of the furniture are light, most of the walls are light, but then if you want to add in um, some rusty reds or some other muted, dark, musty colors, you can have them on some of your furniture, you can have them on some of your details, perhaps some cushions or some throw, um, your bed linen, or you can even have a darker accent wall. This creates a very light and airy feel to your space, but at the same time, you do have that depth and that contrast in those darker colors. And this combination is absolutely magnificent. Key point number three, materials. In both the Japanese style and the Scandi style, we see an extensive use of natural materials. And this is something that I really, really like. We use lots and lots of different kinds of natural wood. In the Japanese style, we see medium to dark colored woods, whereas in the Scandi style, we see medium to light colored wood. And again, Japandi combines them both. In a typical Japandi style home, you will find uh, light flooring, light furniture, but with some selected items in darker wood as well. Even if wood is the most used material within Japandi, we also have lots of other natural materials like seagrass, rattan, caning, stone, concrete, glass and metal. And in our soft furnishing we have cotton, linen, jute, wool and other natural materials as well. In Japandi you want to stay away from anything plastic, uh, avoid acrylic, plexiglass, um, any loud man-made materials like that. Keep it natural. Key point number four, philosophy. Each and every interior design style have their own cultural tradition and purpose. There is a deeper meaning to Japandi as well, and this is explained by two different concepts that we see in the Japanese and the Scandi style. In the Japanese style, we find a concept called wabi-sabi, and this is basically uh, embracing the imperfect. Not everything needs to be perfect. We can find this wabi-sabi concept expressed in let's say vases that seem to have been broken and then put together again in a beautiful way very often they use gold to mend these broken pieces so it's about really seeing the beauty in the imperfect and the broken in the lived life so to say and this is something that I love 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 about Japandi further than that we can also see objects that have a more um, organic form and shape to them like if you have a, a vase or a bowl it doesn't have to be perfectly shapen it can be a bit lumpy a bit uneven a bit crooked it doesn't have to be perfect so if you want to decorate your home Japandi style, do bring in these items as well that are not perfect, they're perhaps um, handcrafted, handmade, they don't come from any machine and they have some organic shapes to them and they soften up your whole design scheme. And to be honest, it just makes everything so much more interesting and unique. In the Scandi style, we have a concept called hygge, and hygge means basically that we make our home as cozy and comfortable as possible. This is enhanced by the use of different uh, natural materials and not at least your soft furnishing. You can have some uh, cushions in different materials in your sofa, like some of uh, cotton, some linen, some uh, knitted wool, uh, some velvet, and you can top it off with a throw of faux fur. It's all very tactile, very soft, and very cozy. We also have an extended use of lighting. So in addition to our task lights, we also have lots of different ambience lights and we burn a lot of candles as well. So lanterns and candle holders are essential for the Scandi style. 
Again, Japandi embraces both the wabi-sabi from the Japanese style and the hige from the Scandi style, and this makes it for me an almost perfect interior design style. Which brings me to key point number five, benefits. The Japandi style has lots and lots of benefits, and this is why I think it has become the most trending style of the year. If you decorate your home Japandi style, you will have a space that feels very calm. It's very relaxing and it's very tranquil, as the Japanese influence of the style generally keeps the furnishing very close to the floor. This style feels really grounded, with the extended use of the natural materials in the neutral color tone. It feels really light and bright, airy and real. We have peeled away everything that is unnecessary and we are left with only those items that are high quality and valuable to us. We want quality rather than quantity and not everything needs to be perfect. We can see beauty in the imperfect and we embrace the organic soft shapes as well. So in a nutshell, this is Japandi for you. What do you think? Do you like the style? Is it for you? Please let me know in the comments below. Let me just say that as with all of my interior design videos, this video is meant to inspire you. So if you like the Japandi style and for some reason you don't want to go all out, but perhaps you want to combine it with a style that you have already or just incorporate a few uh, items uh, from the style into your home, this is absolutely perfect. I don't want you to feel that you have to copy and paste everything I talk about in this video in order to have like the perfect Japandi home. But as I said, just draw inspiration from it, take the elements you like and create your own style the way that you want. The Japandi style is not a one size fits all kind of thing. So if you do like the style and you want to go out there and find some items that you can incorporate into your design scheme, I want to show you a selection of items that are found with three different retailers, Amazon, Ikea and Nordic House. They all have items of furniture or decor pieces that work really, really well with the Japandi style. First, let's do Amazon. I found these two very stylish coffee tables. The first one is made of metal and it has a solid wood tabletop. The second one is all made of wood. Both are very appropriate for the Japani style. Then I found this very sweet accent chair. It has wooden legs and arms and a cotton blend upholstered seat and back cushion. This chair is really easy to integrate almost in any room and it's really affordable as well. And I really like this little bookshelf in Beechwood. It has open shelvings and a couple of doors as well for those items that you want to hide away. This little bedside table comes from the same designer and is really cute with its white painted frame and two drawers. Very much belonging to the Japandi style are these seat cushions. Amazon have them in different shapes and sizes, but they are all made of natural materials like seagrass, jute, husk of corn and the likes. And what do you think about this little double vase? It's made of glass, it has this wooden stand and it will make an excellent centerpiece on your table or even look gorgeous in your window. Going from Amazon to Ikea, I first wanted to show you this sofa. It has a very simple shape and it has this very light cotton blend uh, upholstery covers. With its very minimalistic shape yet cozy seat, it will be perfect in a Japandi style home. I also like this floor lamp. It's made of a medium colored wood and it has this very simple light shade. The height is also adjustable and that's very practical. Oh, and this lamp, Knick's Hope, has a very interesting backstory which I really like. On the IKEA website, I can learn this about the lamp. The idea with Knixhult was to make a lamp with minimal environmental footprint by letting bamboo that otherwise would be discarded enhance the lamp's expression, we harness the plant more than twice as much. So this is really a good example of sustainable design and it gives the most warm and cozy light as well. 
When it comes to the floors, my number one choice is this off-white rug in wool. It just looks so soft, so cozy. I just want to take my shoes off, my socks off and just walk barefoot on it. And it will look absolutely stunning in any room. On the other hand, if you have a big family with uh, kids and pets, uh, dogs maybe and you don't want to go with quite as light a color on your rug what about this one it's made of jute which is a natural material it's very hard wearing and it's a beautiful woven rug this one won't only work in your living room but you can also keep it in your kitchen your bedroom or whatever any room of your house really then finally in my ikea shopping wish list i find this adorable set of storage boxes their simple design and round shapes are perfect for the Japandi style and so also is the material. These boxes are actually made out of paper. So the outside of the boxes are covered with woven paper and the inside is lined with handmade paper. And even though it's paper, they are really sturdy, they're really solid and they won't collapse on you. This set is just perfect for your little uh, treasures and trinkets that you want to keep but perhaps not on display. Our last stop for today is Nordic House. They have such a good selection of the most amazing things. First, I want to show you these vases. The first vases, they're really gorgeous. They're made of glass and they have this round and classic shape to them. And actually, you can use these vases both for flowers and also for candles if you want to. Then I found these vases. They're made of recycled glass bottles and they are just amazing. As you can see, they are not completely circular or rounded, but they have a more organic shape to them and they're absolutely beautiful. And if you are looking for the perfect Japandi table lamp, look no further. Here it is. The foot of the lamp is made of light wood and it has the most gorgeous teardrop shape ever. And not to take anything away from that design, it has this simple linen shade and it's just perfect. I also really felt these glasses. They have like this woven uh, coat on. I'm not sure about the material, whether it's a seagrass kind of thing or a straw kind of thing, but don't they just look so amazing? And I reckon they're really good to hold as well. They give you a good grip, both for adults and smaller people. If you're looking for a very unique yet simple armchair, this is a pearl. It's made of wood and the shapes are really rounded and soft and it has a caning seat and back. It looks really comfortable but yet it's such a great design piece as well. For those of you that really know me, you know that I do appreciate my coffee <laughs> and I wouldn't mind at all having my morning uh, oat latte in this cup. It's made of stoneware and it has this white glazing and it just looks very cozy. Then I could not resist this two-seater bench in oak. It has an integrated padded linen seat and it's just a very simple yet beautiful piece of furniture. I believe it's very easy to integrate this bench in any of the rooms in your home and of course it fits very well with the Japandi style. The very last item I wanted to show you is this super cute little side table in wood. It's just perfect to have next to a chair to put away that book or that cup of coffee and it's just a great simple little side table. Okay, so now we have come to that part where I want to tell you exactly what happened with my previous Japandi video. I had been wanting to do a video on Japandi for a long, long time. So before I posted my previous video, I'd spent a couple of weeks on research and planning, um, finding pictures for my B-roll, finding my audio and stuff like that. This is basically how I always do my videos no matter what subject I talk about. I always do my research and I find my b-roll and my audio just to get in the right mood and have the right kind of thoughts and images in my head before I finally do my 
by April, which is uh, basically just me talking about the subject, what you're seeing now. So everything about my Japan Day video was ready and done. I had my notes already done, I had my uh, B-roll, everything was set up and all I had left was filming of my A-roll. Now the very last evening before I did my filming, I was on YouTube and I just watched um, a bunch of different interior design videos because, you know, interior design is my passion in life. And I saw this other YouTuber that just had released um, a Japan video. And of course I was interested and I watched it. It was a good video, it had all the right points and it had a decent outline. So after watching that video, I thought this outline would actually fit my content very well too. So what I did is that I took the outline from this other YouTuber and I put my content into the same points. Should I have done this? No, I shouldn't. And did I need to do this? No, I didn't. You see, I started to work as an interior designer in 2001. So actually, this year I have my 20th anniversary as an interior designer. So I'm quite used to explaining and laying out different interior design styles and solutions for my clients and customers in the countries where I have lived and work. So it was just kind of a lazy thing to do. So what happened is that one of my viewers that had also seen this other YouTuber's video on the same subject thought the two videos seemed similar. So they emailed this other YouTuber and told them about this. So this other YouTuber emailed me letting me know that they didn't appreciate uh, the similarities between the two videos. Fair enough. So I replied on their email and apologized. Now, as I pointed out earlier, I had already done the research on Japandi. I had my notes done, I had my B-roll done, I had my audio done, everything was done. I had all the points. The only thing that I borrowed was the outline. And to be frank with you, as an experienced interior designer over the past two decades, there are some very common points that you use every time to actually describe a style for a client. Like like, uh, what is this style? Um, what does it look like? Where does it come from? What are the key words for the style? What are the color palette? What's the materials? What's the feel? What's the philosophy behind? So these are the points that I've been using for many years already, except that this time I did it in the specific order that this other YouTuber had used them in. So I borrowed this outline. So again, should I have done it? No. Um, is it really a big deal? Um, some people might think it is, other people not so much. Well, I have chosen to take this as a learning experience. I have apologized and I've taken my first Japan Day video down. And also, I had received quite a few uh, comments and questions about Japan Day and interior design. And remaking this video actually gave me the opportunity to address those great questions and integrate that into presenting the Japan Day style. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video inspiring. If you like it, why don't you give me a thumbs up and please remember to subscribe to my channel. So please hit that red subscribe button below. <laughs> Until next time, take care and God bless.